This is our third annual. Do you remember? Do you do you realize that this is our third annual fasting? Every beginning of the year or even the end of the year, we do a podcast on fasting. Vlad is the fasting legend. He's done 40 day water fast. Let me just say this: we're not going to start yet on fasting because we have to intro. We have to let people get in here before we start. But I still cannot comprehend 40 day fast. You did was it a year ago? You did a 40 day fast, and yeah, 2021. Just, so 2021. Two years ago Guys, no eating for 40 days, just water. Uh, and I think you said you did a little bit of broth at some of the time, but it's just absolutely crazy to me. Like, do you think you'll ever do that again? Tell us a little bit before we jump into all the announcements like the stream about that 40 day fast. Um, it, it's actually not that hard if um, it's one of those things. I do believe that God has to lead you and you have to have a strong leading to it. Um, I wasn't planning on doing it. It wasn't something that I was preparing for it um before that um the longest fast i've done was seven days uh in the, like in the last 10 years prior seven to, that. to 40 <laughs> what yeah so from seven wow. to 21 and then on the sixth day i sensed the, the lord's leading to go into a uh an extended fasting how jesus did it at the age of 30 but you know what i was encouraged by is that jesus did it and um and i'm pretty sure that jesus was not fat okay so i'm pretty sure that he was normal weight and like everybody else and um he ate his healthy foods and all of this stuff and so he went into a 40-day fast and he was fine and so i felt led to do that and um yeah and god gave me grace right in the middle of that fast i actually traveled to ukraine something i don't recommend people to do um but my pastor encouraged me to go there was this mega church that invited me and it's been first time in 20 years that actually i went to ukraine to preach so since I immigrated, I didn't go to Ukraine to preach. And so um, I flew there during my 21st, 2nd and 3rd and 4th day. It was the hardest. The hardest wow. thing was actually flying because somebody bought us a first uh, first class business tickets. I never flew first bu bu first class business class. And so they had this Turkey, uh, uh, Turkey Airlines. Uh, man, they had this first class meal there. The devil's and turkey, that man. Was just <laughs> That was difficult. So thankfully I was reading the book of martyrs. So as I was just uh, reading about like how people died and everything. So I just comforted myself that, you know, I'm supposedly suffering in the first class though, um, business class. And so I get to Ukraine before I start preaching. This pastor takes like an hour, sits me down upon meeting with me to convince me that I'm fasting out of not in line with God's will. No. Now, and Say, this guy's like behind a bishop. Me. He's, he's ex mafia. And I'm like, I'm like, first of all, I came Say, here because my pastor me. sent me here. I was like, I didn't want to be here. I don't want to be here right now. I want to be in America praying and just isolated. And the first thing you're doing is taking an hour and telling me to quit fasting and that I'm not doing it in, in, in line with God's word. And I felt like the devil literally speaking to me. So internally, I just said, get behind me, Satan. I was like, I'm going to die before I stop this fast. Plus, I knew that I can't stop the fast 21 days because it's going to take me six or seven days to get out of it anyway. So I was like, there's no way my Ukrainian native food is going to tempt me. So by God's grace, I preached there um, every day, I think sometimes twice and then we got back home and uh, by God's grace I finished the 40th day actually preaching in Jacksonville which also I don't recommend uh because I looked like I was uh, how much weight did you lose that's what everyone in the chat is asking yeah uh, 40 pounds 40 pounds you lost a, yeah. well average a pound a day now there's people in yeah. the chat saying I need to do this what are your thoughts on that do you think they need to pray about it because uh, this my is a, a pretty thought, extreme. my thought on that is don't try this at home <laughs> there we go yeah I think it's pretty extreme right like you'd need a special calling uh the yeah, Bible doesn't yeah. call I, every I, believer to do three that people in the Bible did 40 day fast and in every case we see that they actually had supernatural leading and so mm. I don't recommend doing a 40 day fast because you want to if you're trying to prove something to someone that that's not I believe that God really has to lead you I know people who uh, fast regularly for 40 days and they develop stomach ulcer ulcers it's actually not super healthy to do that uh, a lot of times as a habit but some people practice as a habit and they don't care about stomach ulcers or anything else and so I would just encourage if God is leading you honestly ever since I fasted Isaiah I've had so many pastors that reached out to me even uh, Pastor Greg uh, Locks uh, and Pastor Greg Locks Church, somebody reached out right after that. Um, and almost like once a month, somebody reaches out who felt led 
to go into a 40-day fast and they ask for advice and tips and, and so I would usually send them some um, encouragement. Sometimes their wives would actually reach out. They're like, hey, my husband's going to die and you know, <laughs> can you talk him out of it? And I was like, no, he's not going to die. He's going to be fine. But if God is leading him, you know, this is how you can support him. And, um, and so, yeah, so that's, that's been the journey of quite a few ministers that I know in America that are beginning wow. to feel this call to go into an extended period of fasting as a way to lay foundation for their ministry. I really believe the 40-day fast is one of those things that lays a foundation for your ministry. After that, Isaiah, it was actually right after that that you came. And yes, the whole thing stayed with up YouTube two in the morning up. and talked about YouTube. Yeah, the YouTube blew up. A lot of, I mean, most of the people that know my ministry today, uh, Isaiah, it really happened after that. And that's what the Lord spoke to me. He says, everything up to this point was me building things underground. And He says, now I'm laying a foundation. And He said, the foundation is the same foundation my son had to go through. And He says, you have to go through as well. And that is to humble yourself and to fast. Come on. Guys, by the way, we haven't even started yet. We're waiting to get people in here. We're in the intro and Vlad's already preaching so good. So guys, you're, you guys are spamming questions in the chat. We have a crazy amount of questions already we're going to answer that will probably cover most of the ones. We're going to talk about Vlad's book. We have a lot to cover tonight. Before we jump in and start talking about fasting, I'm already getting fired up here. People are already, already getting excited. For those of you saying, Isaiah, are you okay? I'm okay. My voice just, we're going to find the voice. That's what we're going to do. My voice just took a vacation, but tonight is going to be a really, really good night. Number one way you can help the broadcast, Vlad, how is that by liking the broadcast? Hit the thumbs up. Yeah. There's a thumbs up button there. You got to hit it. I don't know why some of you don't hit the like button. Help us out tonight by liking the video. Get us on the algorithm. Get us promoted here. Let's get those views up. Most of the views we get on our videos, the difference tonight, we have 2,000 right now between maybe we'll have 5,000 by the end, Lord willing, is by you guys engaging. So YouTube says, oh, we're going to push it out to more people. We're going to put it in the, get it through the algorithm. And then the algorithm's like, oh, people like this. So if you guys comment, you guys like, and you guys share, we can boost this up and reach more people. Like fasting is very taboo in the church. And we're not talking about just doing like a five day fasting chocolate ice cream. I'm talking about biblical lifestyle fasting is very taboo in the church. It's not common in the Western church if you don't know. So this is very, very important that we talk about. It might not be super like a fancy topic like deliverance, but it's so necessary and it's a spiritual discipline all of us should walk in. So this is going to be good. So like the video, share the video, and then if you want to give, the links to give are down below in the comments. Vlad has links to give as well. You could give to his ministry, my ministry. When we do these podcasts, like we, we literally don't care. Oh, my chat viewership just disappeared. We don't care where the finances go to you guys can give them to either ministries i i you know so into the guests regardless but again we don't care it's not about income it's about outcome so we're trying to reach people with the gospel so wherever you feel led to give you can give and i also want to say this before vlad i have i interview vlad about his book is i need you guys to get the book now vlad I'm not going to let him talk right now because he's going to say, oh, you can get it for free on my website. Listen, y'all, some of you could afford it. If you could afford the book, I'm telling y'all that a lot of you are my audience, my community. Do not get it for free. Don't be a free writer. Don't, don't try to bum it off his website for free. Vlad is super generous. He gives all of his stuff for free all the time. I really am asking you guys, buy it on Amazon. Buy it for a friend or family. I'm going to teach them tonight a feature on Amazon, Vlad. You could actually buy stuff for people and ship it directly to their house. So what if everyone in the chat tonight bought three books for their friends and family and just, I just ship the books to my friends and family. When I send books to people, I just ship it right to them on Amazon. So do that. If you could afford to do it, buy the book, ship it to someone. And then lastly, very important, leave a review leave a review that's very important because that's going to get it on the amazon algorithm vlad i should travel yeah. with you and be your book guy and i should i could sell books Dude, for you, you just, before you i'm like <laughs> I wow can, this one i'm missing gonna, out see i said buy your book you already did the proper research to write your own book you i already know everything so guys but here's the thing if you leave the review you could get in the amazon algorithm and then they'll promote his book to more people so do that do that. Buy the book. Don't try to be a friend discount. Hey, bro, can you just send it to me? No, Vlad, you don't need to send me it. I'm going to buy it with my own money and I'm going to leave a review. I'm not trying to get the pastor discount tonight. Grab some for your congregation. Grab some from your small groups. Buy 50 for your whole church and hand them out on Sunday. Like do, do something, do something because we need to get this message of fasting out. And Vlad's new book is amazing. A couple dates I just want to give you guys. January 22nd, I'll be in Arizona. And then January 29th, Pastor Mike is going to be at Lifesong Church in Stockton. This will be the first Demon Slayer that comes to my home church. So 
January 29th, Pastor Mike will be at Life Song. I'll have the info on the website soon. Vlad, is there any dates before we jump in? We start talking about fasting in the book. Uh, you want to announce or anything you wanted to say before we jump in? Um, no, just uh, just I'm live streaming every uh, every yes, day. Yes, talk about that. Talk days. about that. Yeah, uh, Pastor Mike is in the chat. Um, shout out to Pastor Mike. Um, I'm live streaming every day for 21 days at 9 a.m. And so if you have, um, if you are interested in joining the fasting, this is not too late. You can jump on the train. Uh, we are just second day in. And so go to pastorvlad.org forward slash challenge and sign up. We'll actually send you daily at 5 a.m., 5, 6 a.m. daily encouragements as well as the reading plan that goes with it and um, so much other things. We actually, Isaiah, today I've uh, let people know uh, we actually have children's 21-day prayer devotional. Come on. Where parents can print stuff for their children to color and actually kind of guide a conversation with their children on why they are not, you know, eating and kind of guide their children through prayer as well. So we're taking our church children as well through that. So all of that stuff uh, we send in emails and then we get people into closed Facebook group where we kind of upload uh, different health uh, things. One of the things that the book has is it has this thing called um, what's happening to your body mm, on each I day like that. as you're fasting. So like first day, the second day, on the fifth day, hey, this is what's happening to your body right now. This is why you're feeling this and this is what you should try to do more. And so, so we add also a little health tip uh, to the book and we send that in the email as well for people who sign up. So all of that is free of charge. All you got to do uh, to do that is just fast. Tonight, we are knocking out King's stomach. Somebody type awesome, that in the chat. Man. We are knocking King's stomach off his throne. Vlad, real quick, we're going to jump in a second, okay? I'm just, I'm too excited here. Tell me what you said about King's stomach earlier on the countdown. What were you saying about him? Well, so the Bible actually says that some people have their stomach as their God. And so I uh, jokingly, again, this is jokingly, okay? This is not being super serious because it's not in the Bible. Um, I always say that, you know, when the throne of this king stomach is exalted, you usually cannot see your feet anymore. And so you need to bring this throne down <laughs> and the, the king's stomach Dude, needs to come up. down from the throne and the stomach needs to shrink. And so you can see your feet again. And so that God can be again elevated in the heart of your soul. Yes, it's, it is hilarious, but for real though, we got to knock out King Stomach. I know there's a lot of people in the chat that are like, I just can't fast. Listen, if you got 40, 50, 60 extra pounds on you, you can definitely fast. I fast and I'm like almost invisible. If I, if I did a 40 day fast, I would just go 2D and disappear. But if I could do it, you, you can do it. So Vlad, let's jump into this. You got a new book you just wrote. And Before uh, I go for Isaiah, it. I'll, inter I'll interrupt. Yep. You know, we have about 38 pounds in our body that's stored fat mm. that could last us on the average we're talking about an average person not we're not speaking of course about you Isaiah or about <laughs> maybe some people but on the average person they have 38 pounds of stored fat and their body can live off of that for 68 days wow so you actually for those of you who feel like you're gonna die your body starts going into a all food buffet style because it starts eating of the stored fat that you have and which you have plenty which is why after the fourth day you feel so sharp you feel so focused you feel not hungry anymore and you feel alive you're like where is this energy coming from because your body is eating except it's eating wow. from the reserves that you have and these reserves last you some doctors say that, or some some researchers say this up to 68 days and so 20 days or 14 days, you will be just fine. For those of you who are afraid that you're going to die, um, your pride will die, your other things will die, but you're going to be fine. Okay, I love this. I love this. We're going to start talking about the book. Vlad, give us some of the... Now, tonight, guys, I know, I know a lot of people have told you, oh, you could just fast social media, which is great. If you're sacrificing social media, praise the Lord. But I, I wouldn't substitute like not going on social media for a week for biblical fasting. I wouldn't say like, and again, I don't want to be rude here, but maybe some of you say, oh, I'm just going to fast like eating chocolate for a week. That Guys, we really want to talk about tonight biblical 
scriptural fasting because we want to fast we want to get breakthrough we want to do it the biblical way if you're fasting chocolate ice cream i'm not trying to be rude to you or make fun of you but we need to level up like for real the american church we gotta level up we've really made things i think just way too easy for people so vlad give us some the scriptural way to fast not not the way i want to fast the way maybe my pastor has told me i could fast hey if you can't do it just do this on the side what are some scriptural ways that we can fast it's very simple. It's going without food for the purpose of pursuing God. Uh, mm. So complete abstinence from food for the purpose of pursuing God. If you go without food, without the purpose of seeking God, then that's a diet or that's a starvation. Good. Uh, but if you go to, uh, you add food to your pursuit of God, you cannot call that a fast. Now, I understand that in American culture, uh, we have Daniel's fast, we have a lot of other fasts. And first of all, in the Bible, it does not refer to Daniel's mourning as Come a on. fast. It was something that he was going through, uh, which was very important. It was, it was brokenness of his heart. He was repenting. He cut away certain foods from his diet. But at the same time, the Bible never refers to it as a fast. It's what we label as a fast. And I'm not saying God doesn't honor our sacrifice, consecration. Absolutely. God looks at the heart. God is not looking at the calories you intake or not intake. And not fasting or fasting doesn't make you gain greater weight. Uh, with God or worth with God. God loves us the same. But at the same time, there is something that is reserved for people who practice this thing that honestly every religion in the world, outside of Christianity even practices. Uh, Muslims, one of the ways, I even watched some doctors who would study the health of Muslims and would find their physical health better than some of the people in Western countries because wow. of their one month whole month of fasting and so and I believe that the Lord is restoring that in the American church so that we live a lifestyle of fasting. The, the teaching on you know I call it greasy grace where you kind of do whatever you want. You don't have to give your life for Jesus. You don't have to sacrifice. You don't have to deny yourself. You have to discover yourself. It's all about you, me, myself and I. Preach, that kind man. of a preaching of course, uh, anything on fasting is going to make it seem like it's a legalism. You know, he's trying to earn salvation. He's preaching works, you know, uh, salvation by works and everything. That is the furthest thing from the truth. Uh, fasting is a biblical uh, practice. It's been practiced for a very long time of abstaining from food for spiritual reasons. So good. So for those of you guys asking in the chat, fasting is not eating. You can drink water. Some of you are saying, well, can I drink water? Of course, if you don't drink water for, I think, three to six days, you'll end up dying. So you need it yeah. for sure. Always drink water. You never fast water. That's not biblical, but it's fasting food. And, and Vlad, I'm so glad you touched on the Daniel fast. Now, when we say these things, we know that it stirs up the chat. We know it stirs up people because we've been taught our entire lives. All we can do, just do a Daniel's fast. You don't need to fast food. You just do a Daniel's fast. So, so everyone's done the Daniel's fast, but it's important that we know, and we're not being biased and we're not being rude, but it is important that you brought this out. It is not a biblical fast. Daniel was doing this for breakthrough, doing it as a sign of mourning, but the Bible does not say it's a Daniel fast. So these are really like, how do I say this? Western ideas we've created and we've substituted them for biblical realities for biblical fasting. And this is like one problem I have with the invite Jesus in your heart doctrine. I won't go on a soapbox and go ranting on this, but this is another thing where it's like, they didn't do that in the Bible, but we do this and when you talk against it, everybody gets mad. So if you start saying the Daniel's fast is not a biblical fast, People are like, what? But then we want to challenge you guys, go to scripture, go to the word of God, look to what Jesus referred to as fasting, what the disciples referred to as fasting, what the Old Testament referred to as fasting, and you're going to always find it was abstaining from food and drink, and of course, drinking water. So that's what we're trying to say here. If you are doing, let's say, a, and I'm going to quote it here in air quotes, a Daniel fast, praise the Lord. That's a great place to start, but we want to get you guys to a place of biblical fasting, even if it's for, and you could disagree with me maybe here, Vlad, even if it's for three days or one day, even if you start one day, like, Hey, I'm going to do no food for the day. I'm not going to eat at all. I'm going to drink water. We really want to get you guys into this biblical fasting because there's benefits. That's why. Why should I fast? There's yeah. spiritual benefits. So what are some of those spiritual benefits, biblical benefits that we could see in regards to fasting? So uh, one of the first things that uh, fasting does is it disconnects us from the world. 
Come on. The first temptation that the first temptation that humanity faced was with food. The first temptation Israel faced when they got out of Egypt was with food. The first temptation Jesus faced was with food. So that should tell us something about food um, is one of those things that gets us most connected because it comes from the ground to the ground. Our bodies, they came from the ground wow. and they need the ground to live. And the moment you live by food and food is everything for you, then what begins to happen is you stop thinking of yourself as a spirit that lives in the body you start seeing yourself as a body that happens to have a spirit somewhere trapped deep, deep inside. And no wonder a Christian life begins to be more carnal Come than on. crucified. It reflects, it, it's not spiritual. And why is it not spiritual? Because the spirit over there is like dying, hungry to be fed. And the body is pretty much the one that's leading the charge. And so um, the, the, the fasting challenge that we're doing this time, you know, the scripture that the Lord placed on my heart, Isaiah, is in Matthew chapter 17, verse 21. Um, and then in, in Mark chapter 9, where Jesus came down from the mountain and disciples couldn't cast out a demon. And Jesus says, you know, you faithless or unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? And then when disciples asked him, hey, so how come we couldn't cast it out? Jesus says, because of your unbelief. And then he says this, and this kind shall only leave by prayer and fasting. It's interesting. Mm. The problem they had was faithless and in the simple terms, their connection to God was broken. The connection with God was not strong and perverse, perverse speaks of your connection to the world being too strong. Wow. And Jesus says the solution is prayer, which is to rekindle your connection to God and fasting to disconnect from the world. And so I believe that fasting disconnects us from the world and prayer connects us to God and prayer and fasting go together. And so the primary reason, the benefit of fasting is to disconnect so that we can connect. It is to humble ourselves so that God can be more exalted, so we can decrease and God can increase. There's a, of course a lot of other benefits of, you know, getting a breakthrough for your family, believing for a breakthrough for your finances and, and so many other benefits. And most of the benefits of fasting, and this is what I found out, do not happen while you're fasting. They happen mm. when you finish fasting. It was after Jesus finished fasting that He returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't walk in that power or that power wasn't evident, manifested in the wilderness. All He was experiencing is temptation. So I always tell people that if you're fasting and all you're feeling is the temptation of burgers and temptation of fries and uh, you know all the co-workers seem to have birthdays when you decided to fast, <laughs> all of your family decided to be nice to you and bringing you donuts or maybe you're just getting this uh, you know stomach is grouching at you and you're getting moody, cranky a little bit and you're like man why is this, this is not working, you know I'm all I'm feeling worse than before, I can't focus, I, I feel tired, I feel fatigued, I have a headache and everything. Well join the party, Jesus Come was being on. tempted as well. It was after the fast that the breakthrough happened. So don't get, be discouraged if angels don't show up in your fasting. Like people ask me, hey, so you, you fasted 40 days. So did angels show up? Absolutely not. I actually didn't expect them. I didn't fast so I can get a visitation. I fasted, honestly, I felt it was the Lord leading me. And so, but it was after the fast, things just changed, man. Like, the first thing that happened next month after the 40-day fast is that the partnership in my ministry doubled within first week for wow. no absolute reason. I don't know how it happened, why it happened. I, we, we looked at the account, I looked at it, I was like, oh my goodness, what's happening? And stuff. So God just starts shifting things in the ministry and in my own life. And so I really think that God blesses obedience, but obedience in the scripture always leads to sacrifice. And so part of that sacrifice is fasting. So good. And I think one of the things as well, just add as a benefit is it declutters your life. If you like guys, when you start fasting, you're going to realize how much time you spent talking about food, thinking about food, eating food. I mean, 
I'm married, y'all. When we're going to try to get some food, what are we going to eat? We spend sometimes 30, 40 minutes talking about where we're going to go eat. What are we going to eat? Where are we going to, are we going to order? Are we going to make? So you spend a lot of time and then you spend the time preparing the food. If you, if you cook, okay. Or if you're like me, you just door dash and then you spend the time eating the food. So now Vlad, you go from having say two, three hours a day. And that's if you're just eating to survive. Like I do, I don't enjoy eating. I just do it. Cause I, you know, I want to live still. Then you have this extra time what am I going to do with all this extra time? My mind is so empty. I, I have this time now to pray. Now, instead of thinking about, you know, in and out burgers, animal style fries, sorry for all you that are fasting. I'm now thinking about prayer. I'm thinking about God. I'm thinking about his presence. I'm thinking about the nation. So it really does detox you. It declutters you. It rehabs your body. It rehabs your mind from all of the clutter and all. And, and like, even if you go pray, oftentimes when we're in worship or prayer, we, we start thinking about what we're going to eat tomorrow. But what happens when you're not eating tomorrow? then you have that extra time to spend with God. So we really want you guys to replace the time you spent thinking about craving, eating with spiritual things. Cause if you don't add, if you're not, if you're not spiritual in this fast that you're doing, then you're just dieting. Okay. And the world diets. So we want to be spiritual. Now there's, we're about to hit 3000 here, Vlad. There's a lot of people in here. They're like, wait, you have a book, Uh, which by the way, guys, the book is called fast forward. And then also I want to talk about the challenge. What is this fasting challenge you're talking about that you're doing? Is this something that people can join? Can I get on the fasting challenge? Where do I go to find this? Uh, just explain quickly here what the fasting challenge is that you're doing. Well, Isaiah, I would not recommend you to do a fasting challenge. <laughs> so uh, I feel like you're fasting all the time. But um, a fasting challenge is started yesterday, um, okay. but people are still feel free or people are still able to join in, you know, coming in a little bit later. Um, and it's 21 days where people are choosing to uh, choose a fast. Now, biblical fast is abstaining from food, but I do understand that some people are like, maybe some people are pregnant, some people are working at jobs where they absolutely cannot do it for 21 days. So we have like outline, I outlined for some of them where you know, maybe you can fast every other day um, or fast three days and then take, uh, you know, two days off or fast where you don't eat uh, during the day and you just eat a small meal in the evening because the early church actually fasted every Wednesday and every Friday mm. and they would break the fast at 3 p.m. So it was like a half a day fast, but they did it twice a week. And so this was a habit for them. And so um, we just I just encourage people to find whatever works for them that's in line more with the scriptures but also with their situation so like for example if somebody is on heavy medication you know uh, to go full 21 days on water might be dangerous even though I have heard a lot of testimonies by uh, scientists and doctors not even Christian ones where they cure people of incurable illnesses by a 40 day or a 21 day water fast now of course Mm. they monitor their vitals and all of this stuff so of course i don't recommend i'm not a doctor and i will not recommend anybody to do a fast just to get their health problems solved but the bible does have scriptures to confirm that fasting brings a speedy healing to our bodies as well and so part of that challenge is that we encourage them to get the book they can download it or go on Amazon and read because actually the book is 21 days. It's a devotional. It's such a 21 days for each day. You get the prayers, you get the scriptures, you get the encouragements, uh, spiritual encouragement, as well as the health encouragement of what's happening to your body. And um, we also sign them up on the email. So we send them that in the email form and give them some other resources that they can take together either with their church. A lot of churches are doing some kind of a 21 day prayer or fasting. And so we just encourage people to jump on the train and and to do it. There is really honestly nothing special about 21 days. I know we took it from the book of Daniel that he did it for 21 days, but there's no magic attached to it. People say, well, if you do it for 21 days, you'll break back bad habits. A lot of studies have been debunked already that 21, it takes 21 days to break a bad habit. Um, it's just just a number. You can do it 40 days if you want to. Uh, you can do it 80 if you want to, but 21 days is a good kind of a giving almost like a month to the Lord to refocus, to reset. And the Bible does say to seek first the kingdom of God and everything else shall be added to it. So I see this more as uh, taking the first month of the year to kind of set your heart right 
to detox, like Isaiah, you mentioned, to detox your soul from all of this garbage that we have picked up and to reconnect ourselves back to God, disconnect ourselves from the world and hopefully set a rhythm for your life in a way that's going to bring a breakthrough. Uh, this fasting challenge is based around the verses that I've mentioned. This kind does not leave but by prayer and fasting and the Lord gave me a word, a specific word last year and he said, because we do this regularly, but I, I didn't open it to other people. Uh, we do it just for our church, but we have online presence now. And, and I don't know, I felt like in my heart, what if we were to do it with the online community? And then as I went into prayer, I felt the Lord gave me this word. And he said that I'm going to break certain things off of people that couldn't be broken any other Come way. On. Because not everything is a demon. There are things that you have that are still have flesh and there yes. are still problems that we have that we created and we are the problem and God wants to crucify us uh, and He got the demon out but He also wants to get us out of the way. And so and fasting is one of the best ways that that could happen. And you know, I got sick, Isaiah. On the way from Romania, I got fever and um, as I was laying home and recovering, I started to kind of Google more about how to beat fever faster, how to get rid of uh, fever and everything. And um, I found something out that's very simple. Most people already know this, but it became like a revelation to me that a fever is actually a body increasing a temperature so that bacteria, viruses, and all of these foreign things that's not supposed to live there, that they will die because a lot of them cannot live when there's a higher temperature. And you I felt like preach. the Holy Spirit just dropped that in my spirit. He says, some of us, we have certain foreign things attacking our life. Preach. And all we have to do is what our bodies knows to do. Increase the temperature. Increase the spiritual temperature and those viruses will go. And those bacteria will go. And some of these challenges you are facing, they will be broken. So many believers around the world testify of that. And you, is this mag something magical about fasting? Absolutely not. You just go without food and your problems get over. No, it's just something happens spiritually. Your temperature increases. Your connection to God gets stronger. Your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit gets sharper. And a lot of these problems that you're dealing with, this kind gets removed. And I love that you're mentioning that verse because that verse he's talking about a, a stubborn demon, a demon that was yeah. stubborn. The disciples couldn't get out. So I think what you said is so good. Some of you will realize during this fast that you didn't need deliverance. You needed discipline. And some of you will realize you needed deliverance. I think both is going to happen. Some of those demons that have been hiding are going to come to the surface. I don't know. Is there anything a demon hates more than fasting and prayer? I don't think there's anything he hates more. So may, hey, some of you need to fast him out. Fast that demon out. Pray that demon out. Uh, make that demon uncomfortable. People are like, I don't know why the demons won't leave. I'm like, I wouldn't leave you either if I was a demon. You gave me Wi-Fi. You, you're feeding me every night. Some of you, like really, you're making your spiritual house, Matthew 12. You're making your spiritual house just way too comfortable for demons. So fasting and prayer makes demons uncomfortable. It makes your spiritual house uncomfortable. And so I'm, I'm also glad you mentioned, Vlad, the difficulty of fasting. Because a lot of people in the chat think it was easy, just, oh, I could just fast and Isaiah doesn't struggle, Vlad doesn't struggle. It's just super easy for them. But guys, realize, like Vlad said, there's temptation that comes, there's trials that come, and it's not always easy, especially, now you could add to this too, Vlad, the first, in my opinion, first two, three days is the absolute worst because your body's, all the toxins are being purged, you have a headache, maybe you're withdrawing from caffeine and coffee or whatever tea you might drink. And so the first few days are the in my opinion, the worst, and then your body gets over that detox, all the toxins are, are cleansed out, and then it's, it gets to be more smooth sailing. Now, I've never done, the fat, longest fast I ever did, I think was like six days, and I lost tons of weight, but I've never done anywhere close to 40 days, but for me, a few days, things started getting easier. Now, the, the fasting challenge, let me just circle back, is this something we can get on the website? Is this something that we just, we're gonna do it 21 days, or is there like an official page where we can find out about this? Yeah, it's past of Vlad dot org forward slash challenge okay mods pastorvlad.org forward slash challenge i need to get this in the chats on both pages all the mods start spamming that so we can get more info on that and then i also want to ask you you have a, a chapter in your book called fasting is feasting which i love that name because obviously it's an oxymoron right fasting is not eating but you're saying fasting is feasting can you explain a little bit about this whole idea of fasting is actually feasting uh, and this again guys all the details in the book we're answering a lot of questions tonight we're going to go about an hour so of course we can't cover the whole book but make sure that you guys grab that as well 
Yeah, I'm going to read from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, where that idea comes from. And God says, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger and fed you. So watch this, allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he may make you to know that the man shall not live by bread alone, mm. but, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And so God actually allowed Israel to experience real physical hunger so he can feed them. Now at first it seems like, oh, he just fed them with manna, but the Bible says the real reason he allowed them to hunger so he can feed them with his word. Now wow. of course, they never got fed with God's word. They got fed up with the fact that God wasn't giving them, you know, physical food fast enough and they complained and they grumbled and that's why their, you know, 14 day journey in the wilderness turned into a 40 day, a 40 year journey in the wilderness. And so I really believe that what fasting does, not only fasting helps me to identify with people in the world who don't have anything to eat and who are actually hungry and wow, they're fasting not by choice, but by the fact of the circumstances. So it helps me to identify with the poor and the broken world. A lot of people are starving today. And so I choose to identify with them. But fasting, what it does spiritually is that it reminds me that there is more to my humanity, what it means to be a human, than feeding my body. There's a spiritual part of me that gets as hungry and it needs food as my physical body. In fact, I remember uh, sometimes when I when I would fast and I would feel this, you know, this ache first few days, this hunger, this, you know, detox and and I'm like, man, I'm just I can't focus and it feels so so bad. I feel like I'm going to die like all of those feelings. And I felt the Holy Spirit said that's how your spirit feels a lot of times. Wow. He says it's dying, it's aching, it's hungry and you feed it so terribly. You feed wow. it just with rumps just you know like little devotional uh, chapter there or chapter there but you're not giving it a feast and so what happens during fasting fasting is that you can really about third or fourth day sometimes you feel this shift where you almost like when you're reading the word you feel like you are actually feeding on the word mm. you're you actually you're receiving this spiritual nourishment um it's, it's incredible. The, the Word of God just becomes a, more alive. Your, your mind is just more receptive to it. Your, your understanding seems to be more enlightened. It's because your body kind of goes down and your spirit is now being fed and giving, uh, given more attention. So I always tell people that if you're fasting and you're not reading the scriptures, if you're fasting and you're not feasting for your spirit, then you're really just starving. You're not fasting. Biblical fasting is, has to be spiritual in purpose. And one of the best things that we do is we feed our ourselves with God's Word when we fast. So good. Talk to me about the threefold cord. You have another chapter called the threefold cord. What is the threefold cord? And then also I want to say many of you in the chat that are going to start fasting, I hope this is encouraging you, firing you up to fast because I'm telling you right now, this is going to happen when you start fasting. If you've never fasted before, this is what's going to happen. You're going to say, how did I live without this? How did I live so much of my life not doing this because of it brings you that much closer to God, that much closer to Jesus. Interesting, let me just side note here. When the disciples were saying, hey, the, the Pharisees were accusing us of not fasting and the Pharisees were coming to Jesus, why aren't you guys fasting? Jesus made an interesting statement. He said, why would you fast when the bridegroom is here? Like when the bridegroom leaves, think about this, then you're going to fast. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be distant from you, but the fasting is going to bring you back in proximity. So one great mm -hmm. thing about fasting is it brings the presence of God closer to you. If you feel distant, mm -hmm. if you're like, man, I feel like I've had a breakthrough. I feel far from God. Like there's this gap between me and God. Jesus says, you didn't need to fast when I'm next to you, but now that I'm far away and I'm leaving mm -hmm. you, then the bride mourns the bridegroom. Now now we mourn and we call back that bridegroom. And so mm -hmm. super, super powerful thing about fasting is it really makes the presence of God strong. Some of you are like, mm -hmm. what does that even mean? You're not going to understand. If you know, you know. You'll start understanding when you start fasting because you're going to feel. And I don't I don't like Vlad talking too much about like feelings and emotions because I, I, I make some people feel bad that don't experience in that tangible feeling sense. But I don't want to discredit the fact that you will actually feel 100%. closer 
closer to the presence of God. And we're not talking about, you know, just some physical, oh, I have chill bumps now whenever I pray. But I'm talking about there's a spiritual awareness. There's an activation in your faith of, man, I feel closer to God. I feel like God is right there. Like he is Emmanuel, the God that walks among us. He's not a God that's far off on a cloud, sitting on a throne, shooting light bolts, at, lightning bolts at me. But he's actually right here in my midst. And that fasting, according to Jesus, it brings that closeness. All right, I just wanted to throw that in there, uh, throw that in there, Vlad. Talk to us about this threefold core that you talk about in your book. I, I agree. I'll I'll piggyback off of the thought that you just mentioned. I don't think Isaiah that fasting brings us closer to God as much as I feel like it makes us aware of how close God is. That's good. Because, because you know, God really can't get closer to us than living inside of us through His Come Holy on, Spirit. Preach. But, but most of us are so unaware of that and we live our life as though God doesn't exist. We, we, I, I call us sometimes practical atheists, mm. which we believe in God, but we live as though He doesn't exist. And if He does exist, He's so far away. Scripturally speaking, He actually... He can't get closer to you than already He is through His Spirit. It's and good. you cannot really get closer to Him, but your awareness of His closeness can grow or it can shrink. And so fasting is one of those things that can increase your sensitivity as well as awareness of the presence of Jesus that you already carry. It's kind of like, you know, when Jacob slept and then he woke up and he's like, oh my God, I didn't know God was here. And stuff so you know he became just aware of the presence of God that was in that room and so a lot of times that's what happens during uh, fasting and that's why those of you who maybe are facing you know a temptation or a struggle uh, when you're fasting just persevere because you will also experience those sweet moments of deep concentration, uh, consecration, deep weeping. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I look forward to in fasting is for God to, I call it, open the well of my tears, you know, wow. because if if we because even in that verse you quoted right now it deals with mourning yes and stuff so there's something that happens where it's just like this groaning that comes in that weeping and you can't force that you know i can listen to a sad uh, music or or a sermon or something but it's different when the spirit of god just breaks the fallow ground and the tears begin to flow and there's a sense of purity there's a sense of cleansing that begins to take place in the presence of god you know you, you feel you sense it's so near um and it's just amazing the threefold cord. Uh, so, um, in book of Ecclesiastes, the Bible talks about the threefold cord is not easily broken. And so, I like to use that as a reference to uh, prayer, fasting, and giving. Uh, prayer, fasting, and giving as the three weapons that God gives us against the three main temptations, which is lust, greed, and pride. Mm. And so, and if you see in Matthew chapter six, Jesus corrects the spiritual disciplines, he starts with the giving one and he corrects the prayer and then he goes for the fasting. He actually corrects all three spiritual disciplines. And in all of the corrections Jesus gives, he doesn't say that his followers were to not fast, not give, not pray. He just corrected the motive for prayer, for fasting and for giving. And if you would practice fasting prayer and giving, you will see that it will help you to conquer your three main enemies. Prayer helps you to conquer pride because the real reason wow. we don't pray is not because we're busy, it's because we're proud. Fasting helps us to conquer lust because lust has to do with the craving of the flesh and fasting is really a preparation for temptation. It's subduing your appetites, putting them under the control of your spirit, under the control of God's Word. Thus, when the temptation presents itself, your spirit is already in it's already like a boss of your soul and of your body. But if you never fast and you never train your appetites not to get what they want, when they want it, how they want it, then you really, your appetites are ruling and reigning your life and you will have a difficult time be led by the Spirit because in reality you're dictated by your appetites. And so, wow. and the giving conquers greed. You know, and greed is the hardest one. Um, greed, materialism, love of money. And most of us don't think we're greedy. We think it's the guy who has a bigger house is greedy. It's the one who has a nicer car is greedy. But, you know, how I deal with the issue of greed uh, when it comes to giving is 
in Matthew 6, Jesus dealt with giving alms in the beginning. And then after fasting, He dealt with the giving part that's called giving your treasure. And when I was younger, I never saw the difference. I always saw those things are the same. You know, giving to somebody, uh, you know, you're driving through a highway, you're seeing a homeless person, you're blessing them. Somebody comes to your mind who's struggling with the bill, uh, with the paying their, uh, their house and you, you're blessing them. So that's good. The Bible says to do that in private because you don't want to embarrass the person that you're giving this to. But when it comes to giving of your treasure, that's a different story. That's, that's the giving that hurts. And so that's the giving that honestly heals and hurts. And so that's a sacrifice. And sacrifice is always measured by not what you give, but what you have left after you have given. And wow. therefore everyone's sacrifice is measured differently. I can give, you know, uh, last month we gave all of our money and it was large, the largest uh, sum of money that our church has ever received. Me and my wife, we were saving this for a few years. And so we are in the middle of our building fund. And the Lord put on my heart a while ago, I was wrestling with it, I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. And so, and then I talked to my wife and we prayed about it, so we decided to give that. You know, and there's a certain death that happened uh, when that happened. And so that sacrifice, it's not how big the amount was. That's not what measured in God's eyes. What measured that sacrifice is the fact of what I had left. And which wow. at, on that Sunday I had nothing left, and so but <laughs> uh, but God is faithful and God is good, and and He He led me into it. And interestingly, actually Isaiah, the same service, somebody came from another city and they gave exactly same amount right after me, and then a pastor from California whom I've never met, I don't know him from Adam, felt that God called him to do the same. He flew to Tri Cities when I even wasn't here no and way. brought exactly the same amount check to Hungry Gen for the building fund. So it was definitely wow. God working, but you know, we needed to make that sacrifice. And you know, so the giving, the praying, and the fasting, I believe they work together in helping us to defeat our three main enemies, which is pride, greed, and lust. So good. Oh, guys, get the book. Fast forward. Okay, I want to skip a few here and ask you about not telling anyone you're fasting because when we've been talking about this, I read, I read the chat. You know this while I'm preaching, while I'm talking. To, uh, my eyeballs are always reading the chat. If you guys wonder what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the chat. And throughout the broadcast, there's one or two people that will say, you guys shouldn't be talking about your fast. You shouldn't be telling us that you are fasting right now. And uh, I, of course, much out of context, which we'll talk about. But what are your thoughts on when Jesus says, don't tell not to tell anyone that you're fasting should we tell people we're fasting should we avoid telling people what do you think about you know we're doing these corporate fasts our church is doing it i know your church is doing it everybody's doing it right now which is great i don't want to i don't ever want to talk anyone out of it do do it churches should all be doing it but what are your thoughts when people say well you shouldn't tell anybody that they're fat what that you're fasting because jesus said don't tell anyone yeah, I mean, it's in the same uh, setting that Jesus also said, don't tell anybody that you're giving. And He actually used the phrase of, don't let your left hand not know what your right hand is doing. And so uh, if you ever given to your church, not only you know that you've given, your bank knows, you've given, IRS knows, you've given, your church accountant <laughs> knows you've given. So that's already three people that I can count. Most likely your wife knows that you have given. So not only your left hand, there's about tw six other hands that know. So Jesus is not Good. using it exactly that uh, don't let your left hand not know what your right hand is doing. It's just a symbol of saying that you don't want to blow your horn and you don't want to do it for the reason of being seen because mm. it actually defeats the purpose of fasting. The purpose of fasting is to be seen by God, not to be seen by other people. We do see in the scripture of a corporate fast where uh, Esther, she led a whole nation yes. to three-day fasting. And so we see that also Samuel led a nation to fast we see other people in the Bible. God even commanded Israel to fast on the Day of Atonement to afflict their souls. And so we see in, uh, in Acts chapter 13 where people fasted and they ministered to the Lord. So the fact the Bible that tells us that Paul and Silas and other so people... So the Bible tells us Jesus. they fasted. Yeah. The Bible actually tells us. Yeah. Okay, Jesus keep going. Sorry, I just wanted to point for that 40 out. Days. How did, I mean, somebody knew that he was fasting for 40 yes. days. He told somebody that he did that. And some, Matthew had to record that. And so I think that the, the purpose, the deal here is your motive. If your motive is to be perceived as more spiritual, um, then, then it's wrong. Um, if your motive is to, for example, you, you're letting, you know, the people that you need to let 
know that you are fasting so that they don't invite you or why you're not able to come uh, to a particular gathering, uh, then you can do that quietly, discreetly without making a big deal or making fishing for that. The danger is fishing for that comment. Oh, wow. Wow. That's so crazy. Wow. That's so awesome. The thing is, you want to deflect all the you're so awesome off of yourself unto Jesus. The more you get it for yourself, the, the less of the benefit the fast will serve you. So I believe it's dealing with motives. And most of us have a hard time discerning our own motives. So when somebody starts judging other people's motives, to me, I'm like, man, I, I usually go to prayer and the Word of God and do fasting so God can cleanse my motives. And here you are with the gift of discerning motives. You already know all of my motives and why I did what I did. I'm like, wow, wow. you are so spiritual. So I don't um, know other people's motives and I just want to be making sure that my motives are pure before God. And if some of you are watching and you're like, we shouldn't be doing that. Um, and so well you do it the way that you know how to do yes. it uh, this this fast is we actually are leading other people encouraging other people Isaiah you have no idea how many people have reached out who have never done it and so yep. they feel encouraged they Lots feel of heard in the chat too tonight yeah they feel like man wow thank you I, I had so many questions how do I do this how do I do that and so we did that just to help people and if that's bad to help people then I I'm sorry man but that's really the real motive behind it I care less what people think about me uh when it comes to fasting because it I don't believe it makes me more holier it makes me more better than you or another person um, I believe it's just each person's conviction and we all have to follow what the Lord tells us to do and as leaders and as pastors we have responsibility a lot of times to lead people into uh, certain things yes, we have to model yes. things and so we have to model our prayer we have to model our giving we have to model our evangelism we have to model things and if we don't model Paul says to Timothy be an example how can you be an example if you are anonymous Come so on. to be an example like my marriage has to be an example it doesn't mean that I have to blow the horn and always post a photo every day of my wife kissing my wife and saying what I gave her but if I'm never talking about what the Lord is doing in my marriage then I as a pastor uh, could fail in the sense of being an example to the flock that's so so good I love what you said there Vlad I think a lot of people overlook when Jesus said and I want everyone to notice what Jesus said let your people are going to get mad about this by the way but this is going to go word for word jesus let your light shine before men so first of all he says the light's yours so let your light so they may see your good works so this is not even talking about like what god is doing through you brother you know a lot of us like don't take any credit it's all god which i love that praise the lord but we go so far extreme jesus says let your light shine before men so they might see your good works and then here's what they're going to do vlad you already know but i'm just pretending you don't because i'll pretend you know you're just the chat here so they'll see your works and glorify your father who's in heaven so they see what you're doing and the works you're doing and the labor and the fasting and the prayer and the living right and the reaching people and they say wow look at vlad or look at isaiah or look at pastor jamie or look at pastor sam or look at pastor greg or mike or whoever and they say man glory to God glorify God God you're so powerful you're so strong so I think if we don't talk about the things that God is doing through us or with us we're not allowing people having the chance to see our works and glorify God nobody's glorifying us nobody's getting paid to fast nobody's getting glory or credit we gain nothing by saying oh you did a four-day fast or you did a seven-day fast or 21 day fast other than we want to glorify God and challenge other people to get on board. So no, guys, remember when we're taking scriptures in context, if Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and you're not a Pharisee, you don't need to stress out. Be like, oh, okay, he was talking about the Pharisees. Isaiah Saldivar is not a Pharisee. I'm not doing it to gain attention. I'm not walking around the house like, oh, I'm fasting. I'm discreet about it. You know, if I'm fasting, for example, and we go out to eat and there's 10 pastors, okay? We're all sitting down at whatever restaurant pastors go to, Texas Roadhouse, I don't know. And we all sit down and eat. I'm not gonna sit down at the table and say, oh, hey guys, just real quick, you know, I know we're at the conference with 10 other guest speakers. I just wanted to make a really quick announcement to the whole restaurant. I am currently on a 10 day water fast, so I will not be eating. I will, I do not need a menu. I'm not ordering. Thank you guys. I'm on this 10 day fast and what, you know, give them a little pageant wave. 
I'm not going to do that's what that's what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying, don't do that. Don't do things so that people can see you. Don't walk around with bad breath so everyone knows you're fasting like wear deodorant, brush your teeth, live normal, don't complain. We all we all know you have a headache. It's easy to complain I have a headache cuz I'm fasting. Okay, that that's not a, that's not the w- way to do it, guys. You know, people walk around the church, I have a headache cuz I'm fasting. It's like no one even asked you. You know what I'm saying? So I think that that's what he meant, like don't be pompous and religious and proud. I don't yeah. think he meant Hey guys, we're going to do 21 day fast as a church. Let's all do this together. Let's hold each other accountable. And that's another thing. I don't want to go long on this, but even if somebody knows I'm fasting, they could keep me accountable. Hey man, I'm really struggling. Dude, I'm struggling too. Let's struggle together. You got this. You have eight more hours. You have two more days. Do not give in. Mm -hmm. Do not eat, man. Come on. Let's break through together. So I think it's actually amazing to tell somebody, Hey, I'm fasting. Will you keep me accountable? Again, we don't need to bust through the church on Sunday. Oh, I'm fasting. How you doing? I'm fasting. You know, some people do that. They walk around all day long. I have a headache because I'm fasting. So Mm -hmm. there's a balance. And I love what you said, Vlad, we need to be just be, use your conviction. Now, yeah. here's the other side. That's that's the, what I think Jesus meant. The other side is if you're super convicted and you're like, God told me not to tell anybody, then don't tell anybody. If you're super convicted, then don't tell anybody. Then do what your convictions are, but don't start getting up in the chats and getting all your friends. You shouldn't be telling anybody and start becoming mm-hmm. the Pharisee. This is a word right here, Vlad. Mm-hmm. Don't start becoming mm-hmm. the Pharisee that you're accusing everybody else of being. Don't start becoming a Pharisee by trying to accuse yeah. everyone else of being a Pharisee. So I, I love what you said because there's a balance. Some, Isaiah, I found out sometimes when people try to be too secretive, they actually draw more attention to themselves. Yes, yes. When they just play normal, and they honestly don't give it's all about your heart posture like if you think in your head that somehow a fast makes you this into this incredible person that nobody has ever seen or witnessed and you walk around as Mr. Awesome and you're bragging about it and you're hoping like secretly nobody knows this but you know this people you're hoping somebody asks you if you're fasting then of course you have to deal with that with the Lord you have because that is not a proper posture but if somebody asked you hey um are you fasting like like for example, I was live streaming today and somebody asked that and they were genuinely wanted to know about the particular things that I do. And so like part, part of me wanted to say, no, this is private, but I'm like, man, but that's why I'm encouraging them. So, yes. you know, I used my example and stuff. So, and for me, it was not easy because yesterday I was still battling with an illness and I went, I had to go to the doctor yesterday uh, because of, you know, they found out that I had a um, viral infection, but, you know, it's already going away. So part of me was like, man, I, I don't think I could be fasting because of, you know, I'm battling with sickness. Plus I was taking some pills and on the empty stomach, but I don't know. I just felt in my heart. This is what the Lord called me to do. I need to Good. do that. I asked my doctor, I said, hey, can I take this on the empty stomach? She's like, yeah, no problem. And so I'm like, okay, well, that's a confirmation. And so, um, and that's it. And so it's it wasn't easy and so if if somebody asks me for that and I tell them that this is not me in my heart and God knows my heart God judges my heart in my heart I'm not waiting for the question hey so what are you doing what kind of a to me this stuff is just as regular as I woke up this morning very early to pray and if somebody asks me hey uh, did you spend time with the Lord today and how did that go I can tell them how did that went because I had the time with the Lord and so and some people I feel like they keep judging other people who sometimes mention fasting is because they actually don't fast themselves you better preach there's i'll say this jesus said when you fast not if you fast so fasting is part of the christian life it's not an extra credit extra biblical it's part of the christian life there's a parable i don't know where it's at i, I was just reading it the other day basically and i'm, I'm going to paraphrase it okay this is not word for word but basically jesus says listen if you have a servant and the servant just does what he's supposed to do. He just cleans where he's supposed to clean. If you go to work and your job is to build a fence and you build the fence, don't expect the master, your boss, your to call you and say, thank you so much for building that fence. Don't expect your master, Jesus says, to come and thank you and come and give you all these accolades. And then Jesus says, so don't expect when you're just doing the things I'm calling you to do this don't expect someone That's to give so you this pat on the back because we all walk That's around so like man God really owes me something and God's like I don't owe you anything it's a normal Christian life to be praying it's the normal Christian life to witness it's the normal Christian life to fast it's the normal Christian life to live holy so Jesus says don't because the disciples they want extra credit who's better and he goes 
dude, you're just doing what you're supposed to do. So I would never expect my boss to call me every single day after work and say, thank you so much for doing your job. Number one, I'm getting paid to do it. Number two, it's my job. I don't need anyone to thank me for it. So in the same sense, Jesus relates spiritual discipline like, I mean, we just, again, it's about, we just got to grow up and be like, okay, I don't need anyone to thank me. I don't need anyone to pat me on the back. I'm going to do this because God wants me to do this. Okay. Let me ask you this. How can fasting become flip side legalistic? How does it become where it's now legalism, where we turn the spiritual matters that we're doing into routines that are no longer spiritual and they're legalistic. Do you see that with fasting? Uh, and if so, how do we prevent any, that? Anything can become legalistic. Um, if we think that fasting increases our worth to God, um, we are already treading under legalism. Because legalism, mm. you know, anybody who does anything radical for Jesus can be perceived as a legalist. You know, people who abstain from alcohol, yes. people who are fasting, people who are praying, people who believe in holiness, actually a lot of times are being perceived as legalists. Those yep. of us who do ministry of deliverance, we are very heavy on holiness because yep. um, not only, you know, without holiness, we cannot see God, but without holiness, we're going to see a lot of demons. And so <laughs> we have like another layer of really pushing for holiness. And a lot of times we get perceived as legalists. Now, in my mind, a legalist is somebody who will exalt their good works as a way to get grace from God, mm. which we don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. I don't believe that we nope. get that from uh, fasting, prayer or anything or giving. And the other part where it could become legalist is when we force people to fast. I think That's that good. fasting is always done um, on a volunteer basis. And I think people need to be encouraged, taught biblical principles about fasting. When it comes to them fasting, how much, how often, I think that always needs to be left with people. As a pastor, as a leader, as a parent, you can't make people fast. That is wrong. That is not biblical. We don't see this anywhere Preach. in the Bible of God telling pastors to make people do some of these Christian disciplines, like even reading the Bible. We have to teach, we have to encourage, we have to wet in their appetite, but we cannot force. Forced fasting is not fasting because what makes Good. fasting incredible is that you choose it. Otherwise, every kid that's starving right now is actually fasting, but there's no mm. spiritual benefit in that. And so, because it's forced, forced by the society, they don't have enough food. And so if your pastor ch forces you or makes it feel like, you know what, if you guys are not fasting, get out of my church and everything, then you're not in the church, you're in the cult and stuff. So because that, they're using it as a, as a fear uh, technique uh, against uh, Christians, we should encourage, but I don't believe that we should be uh, forcing that. And the other part, of legalism is when you really begin to when you fail at fasting and what you feel with it for example a lot of times people everybody who's ever fasted probably have broken a fast before they expected it and if you have feelings of oh my goodness i have sinned i have abandoned god i have you know like god in heaven just crossed off my name from the book of life like that's a legalistic view. Yes. God doesn't see like that. If you ate a cracker on accident or honestly, you were just so exhausted and tired and you went and you ate a meal and then you resume the fast the next day. Like it's not a big deal. I'm not saying not to value the importance of commitment. I'm very huge on the commitment. But at the same time, you also have to give yourself grace because you're abstaining from food. You're not abstaining from pornography, drugs or something hey. immoral. It, food is good. Uh, heaven will have food. We will not be fasting in heaven. Praise God. <laughs> and so um, it will only be something that's on earth. And so um, that's what kind of my view of legalism is to not to be too hard on yourself when and, you know you fail and also not to be exalting of yourself when you do complete thinking that now your worth in God has increased awesome I love it okay let's go a couple more and then I'm gonna have you pray us out here so good so much good information here all right someone wants to start fasting they're here in the chat they've never fasted before new Christian or maybe old Christian maybe they never got through six hours of fasting how do we start Vlad how how do you recommend me starting I'm I'm First time. I'm here we go. I'm ready. I'm ready to I'm ready to knock 
King Stomach office throne. I'm ready to see my feet in Jesus' name. I'm tired of looking down at King Stomach. Uh, what are some advice, some tips, something to expect? Give me something practical. Um, so I would first encourage that not to be afraid. Your body is wired for fasting. Think about it. Come when you on. eat breakfast, it's actually break fast. So you break that again. So your body is, when you're sleeping, your body is fasting. Your body was designed to fast. Now, we can argue, was it designed to fast for a very long time, but it was designed <laughs> to fast nevertheless. So you already have been fasting. Congratulations. If you've been alive, you already have been doing some fasting, not by choice, but by the virtue of sleeping. So if you don't have fear about it, and then you walk into it with faith. Now, a 21 day might be very difficult for somebody who has never fasted, but it's also not impossible. I would encourage that you prayerfully consider what kind of fast the Lord will have you do. Whether Good. it's every other day for 21 days or it's three days and then you know you take next three days off and then you do three days again and so for the beginners I would just say that you prayerfully consider you consider also your job if you're a truck driver or if you are working at the place where you're not gonna get food for example maybe you're a nurse and you, you're gonna, your hands are gonna start shaking and you're gonna poke somebody with a needle that's good you kind of want to consider maybe doing something else or like eating once a day instead of not eating at all and so if you are a nursing mom or if you are a pregnant you want to abstain from fasting of food completely it's not healthy it's not recommended um if you are a child you Vlad, also say that to... one more time because somebody in the chat literally right before you said it said hey i'm gonna i'm gonna do a fast but i'm breastfeeding say that one more time you said if you're pregnant or breastfeeding you should not be fasting food you just reiterate reiterate yeah, that for yeah. us if you are pregnant or if you are fasting uh do not abs abstain completely from biblical fasting you can fast maybe chocolate or uh or coffee or soda which probably shouldn't be drinking soda anyway or tv <laughs> or something like that but you do not want to right now your season don't of starve life, your baby don't start yeah, your, yeah, baby. your season of life you have another baby that depends on you yes and you don't you're not depriving yourself you're actually depriving another human being that depends on you and so it's very very crucial that you you leave the fasting part to your husband or to your yep. children or to other season of your life, but you don't do that. Also, if you're on a heavy medication, you want to either consult your doctor or not practice fasting, complete fasting on food. And if you are a child, if you are a child, um, you're highly discouraged to fast. Uh, you could fast maybe something like uh, not watching TV or something like that. When you are a child and you're underage, you want to not practice fasting. Now, I practiced fasting as a child from 13, but my parents were aware and I did one day, uh, 24 hours a week. And so as it's long good. as your parents are aware and they're blessing you, and if it's one day a week and they're supervising you, then that's completely fine. But don't, like I had this girl one time, got saved in our youth ministry, and she went I uh, 14 days she was like 13 years of age went what? 14 days without food her parents called her church like you guys are an occult and I was like wow. I didn't even know she was fasting 40 days our, her, our whole church did a 21 day fast but I kind of forgot to mention to the youth that hey uh you want to kind of talk to your parents and stuff so at the time we were radical a lot of zeal and very little wisdom and so um so the girl just took it seriously and started to fast for 14 days so her parents came to church like screamed and yell at me and then yelled at me and stuff so and uh so I and understandably to, uh, understandably right because you're at 100%. that age I mean, your body's developing uh, and if you're yeah. that age and you don't eat and this is if you guys know anything about kids that have gone through like starvation or, or malnourished your body literally doesn't grow during that period so if you yeah. if you're malnourished from like 13 to 15 you lose two years of growth and you don't gain it back so again for kids if you do a six hour eight hour awesome but don't be trying to do long fast because your your body literally needs food to develop so i'm glad you pointed that out vlad now vlad yeah. let me ask you again i'm just kind of going through some questions here that i'm getting it in in the chat coconut water gatorade electrolytes what are your thoughts on like coconut water or um, sparkling water or for example what did someone just say here in the chat Gatorade right they're trying to get these electrolytes a little bit of sugar what is your opinion on that if you're doing a no food fast is that okay is that not okay what do you think so I don't I don't practice that I usually just drink water with electrolytes uh, okay. in it already is that like a powder uh, that you mix in no I, I buy them in Costco and it's oh, just gotcha. electrolytes. Okay. 
electrolytes added. Um, so I do encourage people who do a water fast for 21 days to add into their water um, mineral salt. Um, mineral salt uh, and they have it on Amazon you can just google mineral salt what it does is it helps to um, with your bones and helps with your joints a lot of times during fasting that sometime on the second week or third week you actually start experiencing extreme uh, weakness in your knees um, I've experienced this a few times and I was just wasn't sure why this is happening and so because you, you lack those electrolytes and that mineral salt that's gone it's no wonder why David says in Psalms that my knees are weak through fasting and wow. so I've never experienced that until actually one time I was on a prolonged fast and so the way they say to help alleviate that is to add a little bit of mineral salt and they actually call it fasting mineral salt on you can buy it on Amazon and so I usually start adding that like on the last week and just a little bit into my water it's like a little bit a little bit of powder and um and that's about it but um it, it is abstaining from food so you technically technically you can drink uh, you know juices but I say to people that there's a difference between a biblical fast and a juice fast because some people do this juice fast where honestly like they they grind a burger like <laughs> the, the, that was the, my next and, question and so go ahead and just segue said, segue in yeah one pastor said he said if it goes through the straw it's under the law <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it also depends on how big your straw is yeah. <laughs> so, that's hilarious uh, my, my encouragement is honestly just just be honest with yourself if you're doing a juice fast and every day you're doing like three four juices like hey god bless you i'm i'm, I'm not here to judge uh you're abstaining from food technically and so but it is a little bit different because nowadays you can drink so much of those juices and actually they fill you up just fine yeah. and plus the problem with a lot of juices also is that your stomach actually doesn't go to sleep because mm. you constantly keep awaking it by giving it those calories and so and by giving it uh, those nutrients and so the goal is to keep the stomach asleep and so if King you keep stomach, adding all of these, sleep, man. yeah if you keep putting all of these lock. sugars into your body through Gatorade and some other stuff then your stomach might be keep getting awakened so I just drink water That's with a really um, good electrolytes point. And, and sometimes hot water maybe add like a little lemon um, and stuff and so and if I get like I would go on a date with my wife and just get you know hot water with with lemon yeah. and that's it i want to i want to say two words that i want everyone to write in the chat and i'm going to explain the two words ready god understands okay i want everyone in the chat that's legalistic oh. to, to write that down because i think vlad we don't realize god understands he's not legalistic if if let me just example here if you're five six days in and you're like seeing black dots which is like a sign your sugar's low and you're barely able to walk and you're just really struggling if you go grab a Jamba Juice, now of course we're telling you don't be drinking three Jamba Juices a day. Don't be just eating you know, a bunch of high calorie protein because that's not the point. But if you're like, hey, I'm seven days into my fast. I'm like weak, I have no sugar. I need some type of calories. I'm, I'm thin as it is. And you go get a Jamba Juice, you don't need to you know, wheat for three days after. Just, hey, I drank a Jamba Juice. I'm moving on. I'm going to keep going on the fast. God understands. He's not going to be, he's, he's not holding a lightning bolt waiting to, to throw it 100%. at you. If you're breastfeeding, if you're pregnant, if you're on medication, if you're already super skinny and you get really shaky, do like Vlad said, fast one day, eat one day. Fast one day, eat one day. God completely understands. So we want to make sure that we're not being being legalistic and we're not like you know i used to think like i gotta wait till 1201 it's like 11 50 i'm like 10 more minutes and then god will let me eat but then you know what i realized vlad i'm like wait is god in pacific time is god in eastern standard time is god in like uh you know south africa time because i'm over here waiting 10 more minutes and god so these are things I that would, i learned I, I always found a loophole i would always end fasting when i felt like ending fasting and i would say well it's 12 o'clock somewhere somewhere yeah so I, I think the idea is like man god understands we don't want to create this legalistic god if okay. you need to do it then do it but but i wanted to highlight a point you made which is super super good my mom actually just asked about that again is like not your stomach hibernates in, in essence right and of course these are not i'm not using proper medical terms but when you you're not eating for like seven days or eight days or even five days your stomach it stops doing the contraction it stops constantly growling it stops it's like all right you're, this dude's not feeding me so i'm just gonna shut down here and go to sleep so if you're eating these sugary drinks or these uh jamba juices or you're blending up your in and out like you know trying to get it through a thick straw then you are waking up your stomach constantly you're basically you're waking up king's stomach and you were trying to yeah. put King's stomach in a headlock, mm. knock him out and put him to sleep. So don't keep waking him up. And that might help some of you that are like, I keep resetting the three day cycle, that three day struggle, yeah. which you, my next question actually was, 
I'm, it's like, man, there's people in the chat saying, I'm having a hard time getting past the first few days. Like, what are maybe something I can do to just try to get past? Is there any strategy or any tip? Again, we know these are no secrets. You know, we're not giving any any secret society information here. But is there any tips that you can give us maybe for the for those that are like, I'm just really struggling the first few days? So this is what helped me. Number one is that I made up my mind that I will go to the end. Come on. So, that, so that's how I usually go on a prolonged fast. I don't ask my body what it wants what it feels like doing it. I don't ask my emotions how I feel. Come on. And so I ask the Lord what He wants me to do. Once the Lord gives me a clear instruction, then I make up my mind and everything has to fall into place. Now, is it easy? Absolutely not. Does my body throw a fit? Absolutely. Does my soul throw a fit? Absolutely. Mm. But at the end of the day, I made up my mind. And so, and usually when you do like a 21-day fast, then, then you just you just kind of buckled in and waiting to pass through the first few days um, because you don't see the end at all. So like the, the end is not even there. Okay. So like first three days doesn't, it's piece of cake. You're like, I just need to get through first few days. And after that, you still don't see the end at all until about 19th day, 18th day that you start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And that's when you start getting these ideas. Oh, I already got a breakthrough. I think uh, the Lord already has done the work that he needed to do in my life during this fast. You know, I'm just going to not be a legalist and I'm going to finish earlier. And so, um, and with that, I've learned to train myself to be a finisher, not to be just a quitter. My Good. Savior, when He died on the cross, He didn't say, I quit. He said, I, Come it on. is finished. Come on. Jesus is the author and the finisher of faith. And so I always tell people not to be legalistic about it, but also don't be so loose about your fast that you never finish anything in your life. And it's not only the fasting you never finish, you don't finish school. Um, you don't finish writing a book, Come you on. don't finish writing anything, you start and you don't finish. And so one of the things that translates into my life in other areas of my life is when I finish a fast is I developed a muscle in my spiritual arsenal or my spiritual um, metabolism of if I start something, then I develop the consistency, the persistence, the commitment to finish it. I love and so, that. And it's the ones that finish it that see the rewards. So I always uh, say start with the finish in mind by making up your mind. Now this doesn't mean that if you fall ill or anything of that sort that you know you can't you know get a drink or uh, break a fast and resume again. But in my mind personally I don't give myself permission for that. And so uh, I, when I was fasting a 40-day fast, I told my wife that um, I said, I am really sorry for what I'm about to say, but I will die wow. before I will quit the fast. And I said, they'll carry me on the stretcher and I will not put food into my mouth until I complete this fast because I felt so strongly like I could take a bullet if you put a gun right in front of me that this is what the Lord called me to do and I had to do that. And so there was that conviction. So it didn't matter if a pastor from Ukraine sat for an hour and tried to talk me out of it. Like that, that stuff didn't matter or a nice burger at the business class in um, on a flight to turkey. Ukraine. Because the, it, yeah, the because juicy turkey. Yeah, Jersey, Jersey uh, juicy turkey and stuff. So, so that's what I would kind of encourage to start, make up your mind right away. The Bible says about Daniel, about his 21 day of mourning, when the angel came and he said, when you made up your mind to see God, I was dispatched. That's, I'm paraphrasing it. Wow. And so God didn't come when he finished 21 day fast. The moment he made up his mind, something just happened. So if you're struggling always the first three days, um, I'm telling you one thing is that you can experience breakthrough on the other side, but just make up your mind and just stick through those difficult first few days, get some rest, um, drink a lot of water and uh, watch some more messages on fasting because if you're listening to a sermons where pastor describes his latest trip to Chick-fil-A, uh, you know, <laughs> that's not going to encourage your fasting. Delete so your listen. DoorDash. Delete the DoorDash yeah. app while yeah, you're fasting. Your DoorDash pastor and stuff. So just listen to something. I mean, Miles Monroe, Derek Prince, there's quite a few guys. Jensen Franklin has quite a few messages online. Um, I have messages online about fasting. I actually like to listen to stuff that's more like sacrificial or things like about dying to yourself, especially when I'm fasting, because it, it really just kind of reinforces what I'm feeling. Um, um, and it's really good. That's so good. I love that. Okay. Now somebody was asking, what if I do a sexual fast? Now we're not going to go deep into this because there's a lot of kids watching, but I know that this is something that we've talked about in the past. There is 
there is a type of fast, but that's not the fast we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, because there's some wives in the chat that are like, oh, I've been fasting. Okay, we're not talking about fasting from intimacy, but I'll just, I do want to give the verse for context. It's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. It says, do not deprive one another. So that's very important to note. Except, mm -hmm. so there's only one exception to depriving a spouse. Ex and again, this is only in marriage. So if you're dating, you shouldn't even be thinking about this. Except perhaps by agreement for a limited time. So we know now... There's one exception. It needs to be agreement. So it's not just the wife wanting to do it or the husband wanting to do it. It's only for a limited time. And this is for what the reason is, Paul says, that you might devote yourselves to prayer. Then come back together again so that Satan might not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So there is some type of, I wouldn't go as far, Vlad, maybe I'm wrong as a saying this is a sexual fast here. And like, we need to do this as, you know, as a married couple. But if God does say, hey, for a small time, separate and separate sexually i mean and devote yourselves to prayer come right back together so that satan doesn't tempt you there is a type of sexual fast but it's not something i would create a doctrine out of now listen i have four kids so you already know i'm not making a doctrine out of sexual fasting here but i would say there is some people in the chat earlier that were saying oh yeah i'm gonna do a sexual fast and and specifically a couple ladies in the chat so uh, what are your thoughts on that vlad people that come to you and say i don't know if i'm gonna do food i'm gonna do a sexual fast um so i know it's a little sticky here I think if you are single, yes, uh, you should abstain from... Um, uh, well, you should always sex. be fasting all the time, 24. I'm like, fasting I think Paul's talking to married get, couples here. Yeah, until you get married. Um, if you are married, though, um, it's not healthy. First of all, Isaiah read a verse. The Bible does not um, in there talk about fasting in terms of abstinence uh, abstaining from sex how i yeah. see that verse i could be wrong how i see that verse is that when i leave out of town for three days or sometimes uh, usually i try not to go for more than three days um, to spend time with god and so it's something that i started to develop last year of leaving uh, getting a cabin and just turning off my phone and just being there for three days and so i'm not physically with my wife i'm not intimate with my wife and so um and then i come back you know and i resume my normal duties including you know being a husband to my wife and so that's kind of how i see that um when it comes to prayer that's um, good if that's intimacy interesting with your wife is distracting your prayer life like that's what I I'm saying. At what point does that even happen? I mean, yeah, I, I wonder if like you have some other problems there that doesn't because typically that's that's a holy thing. That's not a dirty thing. Exactly. Stuff. That's not a that's not a some kind of a wrong thing. Now, when it comes to fasting, though, when you fast, um, what I found out is that a lot of times you are physically weaker. Um, your desires, urges are way weaker so people yes. who's like hey so when you do a 21 day fast do you still have you know physical intimacy with your wife it's not that the bible doesn't allow that it's just a lot of times you're physically mm. just not there because your, your physical desires and a lot of other stuff they're just not necessarily on, on the same level as they were when you were not fasting and so uh, now it could happen but sometimes it's not possible just because you're just physically not necessarily yeah 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 and your hormones are out of balance right your testosterone mm -hmm. all that technical yeah. stuff is out of balance yeah. so there's not that there's not that drive there but again yes. guys remember uh for the ladies or the men i don't want to just say just ladies but for the men as well don't use this verse as a way of depriving one another because the the verse starts yeah. with do not deprive one another paul's Come like on. hey I already, I already know y'all are going to try to use what i'm about to say to deprive each other so he says uh -huh. okay there's an agreement it's a limited time so it's not mm -hmm. a 21 day it's a limited yeah. time and then he it's says you're day. devoting yourselves to prayer then you're yeah it's not a 40 day yeah. and then you're coming and, back together again. like if i can add to that isaiah yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when i was doing a a uh, the, the long one um, you know, my wife, she was like, oh, you know, she's going to sacrifice because we, we go on, on weekly date nights and stuff. So, and I told her, I said, no, I'm like, we will go to weekly date nights. She's like, no, I'll sacrifice them because I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want you to suffer. I was like, no, I was like, I'm not going to suffer. Don't worry. I was like, I suffered at the, on the plane and the for business class thing. And I was like, <laughs> that was the suffering. I was like, everything else is not going to be the same. And so, and I really, honestly, I really felt that, hey, if God is making me more like him, this is also one of my way of serving my wife. And if my wife wants to go Good. have food, I'm going to go with her, just, you know, drink water and pretend like I'm eating and stuff. Yeah. And just have a more conversation, turn off my phone and stuff. So, because, you know, if I'm on my phone instead of eating, then that's also not being a good husband. So I would just 
just really encourage you, especially if you're a wife and you're fasting, you know, this is not a moment to stop being a wife. This yes, is not a moment good. to stop being your mother and say, hey, I'm not going to feed my children. Why? Because I'm fasting. Well, that's not, the Bible doesn't call us to that kind of a fast. We should not stop doing what we need to do, what our duties are in the house and in our marriage to our spouses. So good. Okay. Last thing I'm going to ask you, Vlad, and then I'm going to have you pray for us. And then we're going to direct you guys also to the book and the challenge. And then I'll hang out for a bit after as well. Um, and I see Vlad's wife and my wife in the chat saying, amen. Amen. Both of them are in the chat right now. So praise the Lord for you guys both. Last question I want to ask you. I think this is a perfect one to wrap everything up. How do we end the fast? I did a 21 day fast. I did a seven day fast. And I'm, I'm hypothetically, I did a 40 day or I did a five day or a three day Am I in line? Am I at Mountain Mike's trying to get a large pizza? Am I trying to get an in and out drive through? Like, is there a way I should break it? Because that's one thing keep, people keep asking. How do I break my fast? This is very important. Um, I actually have a mutual, well, uh, a pastor I know had a friend who had a 40 day fast, literally ate in and out and died after. And that's actually happened several times. Physically, really? he died. Yeah, yeah, after a 40 day fast. A, Kore a Korean pastor in Southern California. But that's not only one story. There's actually several stories I've heard of that. That's oh. just someone I know personally. And his his friend actually passed away. He went to literally went to In-N-Out after a 40 day water only and ate, I don't know how much he ate, but he ate enough and it put his body into shock and it actually literally killed him. So I know, again, I'm not trying to scare anybody. If you, you do a three day fast, you're not going to die if you oh, eat you in and out. There because that's very dangerous. Yeah. 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 So we do need to be careful. I had a friend that did, I think he did a 11 days fat. He fasted for 11 days and he actually ate some grapes and his body went into shock. Apparently, like if you eat too much fructose sugar, like after 11 days of not eating, something happened, but he went into shock and was very sick and stuff. So talk to us a little bit about coming off of a fast. What are the preparations and how do we get back to normal eating? Um, so when breaking a fast of 10 days or more, the breaking period should be extended one day for every four days of fasting. So let me say that again. If you're breaking a fast of 10 days or more, the break-in period should be extended one day for every four days of fasting. So if you're fasting eight days, your coming out of a fast should be at least two days. If you're fasting 21 days on water, you should take at least three days to come out of it. If it's a 40-day fast, then you should take seven days to come out of it. One of the biggest mistakes that I believe both spiritually and it could damage us physically but spiritually in the sense that God is looking if we are filling ourselves and we allow those urges and those desires quickly you know that that, that shows that we didn't practice self-discipline we didn't learn the lesson that we needed to learn and so it takes a lot of self-discipline to come out of a fast slowly and so the rule I mean there's really only just one main rule is that you should never break the fast with eating a normal meal that's which good. means you know somebody write animal that proteins down. bread sh bread sugar dairy processed foods um so you should never break a fast with longer fast with eating a normal meal but honestly even two-day fast if you're just going yep. straight for the steak um you will create serious discomfort stomach cramps uh, nausea weakness you will no nullify the physical benefits of fasting it will cause serious irreversible complications and as Isaiah mentioned in some extreme cases it will cause physical death. I remember I was fasting Isaiah once uh, seven days uh, and afterwards my, my mom she's an incredible cook and um, and she made it wasn't we were not all fasting it was just I was just fasting so she made a cinnamon rolls a homemade cinnamon rolls oh, and man, so there was like them. 12 <laughs> 12 of them and um, 12 it was disciples. a seven days so I'm like I ate, you know, just a little bit of soup. And after that, you know, I started eyeing those cinnamon rolls. And so I, I told myself, just one. <laughs> and uh, so after seven cinnamon rolls, oh no, um, I was rushed quickly to the bathroom. You ate seven um, of the disciples right there? <laughs> yeah. And then I spent 40 minutes. I mean, I was 40 minutes sitting on the toilet. I was crying mm. like like I didn't cry during fasting. I promised to God that I will never do it again. I mean, I, I made promises. I don't even know what I was saying there. I was like, God, just save me, spare me. And I felt like, you know, of course, 
you know, God wasn't causing this. Cinnamon rolls were doing this to me. Yeah. And stuff. So because it was lack of self-control, that gluttony, you know. And the Lord's really rebuked me. And he said, he said, you're pretty much undoing everything you've done with your fast. You're showing that you're obsessed with food, that, mm. you know, self-control is not really developed in your life and stuff. So kind of repented. And after that, I've really been approaching this extremely carefully uh, about exiting the fast because I don't want to develop stomach ulcers or any other stuff. And so um, one of the things that I do is, of course, anything that's water-based broths are good. Oh yeah, give us some examples. The chat is asking, give us some some examples of what you would eat. So the, the thing that I do is I use a cooked uh, tomato. So I cook a tomato pretty much in water and uh, I drink the water and then I eat that cooked tomato. Um, so bone broth is also another one um, but again like if you fast for 21 days on water you want to like you don't just eat like chicken noodle soup tomatoes yeah um so bone broth um steamed vegetables could be a little bit later not right away um adding tofu to broths help to add substance and it's less solid than the potato or rice in the soups um and so but pretty much you want to avoid anything that's solid for days um, and at specifically meat for at least um, a week if you're going on a 21 day or a 40 day water fast. Some juices are good, but you have to watch because some juices can actually give you, um, uh, cause you troubles as well. So you, you got a, a, you know, soft, sweet fruit like melon and watermelon and papaya and mango are good to follow after water based broths. But pretty much another thing that I would give an advice on is that if you know somebody who finished the 21 day fast quickly and they exited quickly, please don't follow that person's advice or don't follow <laughs> that on. person's example. That's really good. Yeah, really good. You know, like, well, my friend, yeah, but hey, you're not your friend. So I would I would not yeah. be taking advice from your friend that went to in and out right after their fast. And that and it is funny and laughable, but it is the it is the temptation. Like you it's what you want to do. You're like, I want to go eat something fast food, something good, something, you know, greasy, whatever. It's like you 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 haven't ate for so many days. But again, you mm -hmm. guys I would say as much discipline as you use in the fast, use at the end of the fast. Don't rush through the finish line and fall over five steps before you finish. You know, like Vlad said, it might not be the wrath of God. It might be high fructose corn syrup that's really coming at you from you eating all yeah. the processed stuff. So Vlad, oh, I'm gonna guys stay on here because I'm gonna have Vlad pray for us. But before you pray for us, tell me where we can get your book. I know you did in the beginning, but there's now 3,600 people on here. And then tell me about where we can do your fasting challenge. So how do I get your book? Again, guys, we only covered, well, we didn't cover hardly any of the book. We covered maybe just like two small portions, but there's much more in the book that's going to help you. Please don't sit back and say, I need help. I don't know what to do. We're bringing you guys this content. Vlad's written a book for you. So show them the book, Vlad, talk about it, and then tell us how to do the challenge or where to go. Um, so guys, the, the book is called Fast Forward. Um, the subtitle is Accelerating Your Spiritual Life Through Fasting. It's actually a 21-day uh, devotional. It has parts about the ABCs of fasting, how to begin fasting. Um, it has um, each day an encouragement. So like 21 chapters, but they're designed to be like a 21-day fasting. You don't have to. Some read them all in one setting. And um, it has personal stories of mine. It has also encouragement, spiritual encouragement to fast. It also has scriptures, prayers, as well as things to reflect on and health um, uh, like a health uh, tips on what's happening to your body while you're fasting. You can get it on Amazon. Um, it's available anywhere books are sold. You can get it on Amazon as a Kindle. I have a hardcover. They are expensive. Partially is because I did not know how much it costs to print Looks colors. Nice. And so, but yeah, they look a lot nicer. So they're like, they're, they're, they're expensive though. And so most of the Amazon eats most of the fee anyway. So, but the paperback is less expensive. It's black and white. And then there's an the audible version. And actually the guy that did the audio for Michael Heiser's books, uh, he did the audio for, for this book. And so audible version is um, in it as well. And so if you cannot afford it, um, you can go on my website, pastorvlad.org and download the book there. It will be available in Spanish and Russian very soon, here in a few weeks. Um, and we have a reading plan that you can uh, use a version reading plan together with your friends on version Bible app. Just go to fast forward, look for on it, fast forward. Now, we are a part of a fast forward challenge right now. It's from January 9th to January 29th of 2023. 
So if you're rewatching this way later, you probably have missed it. But if you're watching it within the time of January 9th through 29th, which we are I live right now. By the way, everyone keep, yeah. people ask, are you guys live? Literally, it says yeah. live above, but it's I'm okay. I'm like live. already thinking about the rewatching and yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, so, no, no. Yeah, uh, it started yeah, yesterday, we, correct? Yeah, we are live. So, yeah, it started yesterday. So, everyone is welcome. If you still have not decided and you watch this right now and you decided that, hey, I want to be a part of this. I want to do something about this fast. Uh, you know, I want to apply some kind of a way of fasting. I want to invite you to just go to pastorvlad.org forward slash challenge and sign up you will right away get the facebook link and you starting tomorrow you're going to start receiving um email updates and then 9 a.m pacific time monday through saturday um i live stream each day kind of share a little insight share what's happening to your body provide encouragement answer some questions and then we offer also prayer so every day he's going live at 9 a.m so that means you're dropping the kids off at school you could play it in the car. You're driving to work. You could play it right there. You're getting up, getting ready, yeah. put on some earphones, listen to his stream. He's giving advice. He's praying for people. He's teaching you guys about fasting. That's a huge commitment to go live every single day. And you said you're doing that 21 days. Yeah, 21 days. That that that's the plan, Isaiah. We'll we'll. Uh, so he's he's working ask through me, 21 ask me days. again after 21 days. That's a yeah. That's a lot of work there. You know, I'm trying to pass him by the way, guys, and subs. I think we're caught. I'm even. We're even right now. But I, you're gonna blow right past me. So hey, guys. By the way, I'm going live every day at 8 a.m. No, I'm just kidding. Um, make sure you guys get in these lives with Vlad. Vlad amazing night we did we ended up going an hour and 40 minutes we we're gonna go an hour but who cares i mean we're not paying to be live so as long as you don't care i don't care do us a favor pray for us and then i'll stay i'll get you off and i'll stay on and read the donations and all that but just pray us out here when it comes to fasting uh lord i just thank you for this opportunity i thank you for my friend isaiah for giving me the opportunity to speak on this topic lord i thank you for hundreds and thousands and eleven thousand people as of yesterday that signed up for this challenge people who have said yes to disconnecting from the world and connecting with you and lord i pray that those who are maybe on the fence and are facing certain challenges in their life and they really need to have that really this year it has to be different they, they can't afford to live their life the same the way they lived every single year and something has to be different lord and they feel this quickening in their heart right now that what has to change is the foundation what they do first has to change and they have to give this month to your hands god cut away put away the food and begin to focus on your word focus on prayer focus on repentance focus on, on drawing closer to you lord i pray to those people that you will just bring confirmation right now lord i pray that you will stir their heart i pray that you will lead them the same way holy spirit you let jesus into the wilderness to fast that you will lead them that this will not be like a any other fast they've ever done before that this will be supernatural that this will be divine and there will be a grace of God on it Lord that you will just richly bless them God that you will strengthen their faith God that you will enlarge their territory God may the fruit from this commitment and this fast God be may they see the fruit throughout this whole year and even years after Lord in Jesus mighty name I ask you for you to speak I ask you for you to strengthen and I ask you for you to guide us Lord and Lord I ask you for those that are facing family problems financial problems and who are facing health problems as they are beginning to move in fasting Lord may this kind may these stubborn demons may these stubborn problems may these stubborn viruses and bacteria in our life Lord may they die May they, Lord God, evaporate. May they, Lord God, be cast out. May they be broken down, Lord. May we experience perpetual victory in the valley. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What an amazing night. Guys, make sure you get the book. I'll sign you off here, Vlad, and I'll stay on and talk to them you, and Isaiah. stuff like that. Thanks so much, bro, for being on tonight. Really appreciate you. Thank you. All right, man. Good night. Good night.